All right, it's an exciting day. We're getting started on the kids' bunk beds. And I don't know, this just feels kind of like a special part of the bus build. But what we're, um, the first thing we had to do, which we already did, was make this kind of wall piece that finishes off this bench area back here because our lower bunks are gonna butt up to that. So just yesterday, real quick, we just kind of finished insulating in there, cut this little wall piece, pocket hold it in, and then added a 120 outlet and um, a 12 volt USB outlet down there so that when the kids are sitting here on this kind of center bench area, they'll have some power if they need it. Um, but now on to actually building the beds. What we decided to do is instead of doing two by four construction for the bunk beds, we're pretty limited in our height of the bus in general. And then especially because the curve is so steep up there. And so two by fours just eat up a lot of space. And so we were trying to consider what could we do that would give us the strength of holding big teenage kids on these upper bunks, but take up less vertical space than a two by four. And so what we're gonna use is actually eighth inch angle iron to make long rails on both sides and then we'll you know do slats across. So to start with on the lower bunks, we're just building a little wall, which we've kind of started already. And then we're gonna attach the like a long rail of angle on both sides in here that the slats will sit on. And then the bed will actually come all the way across. We're trying to make this perfectly flush with this bench so that the bed can actually come all the way across, all the way to the back here. Um, and then in this space, so I'm kind of have my feet in right now, this is just a big open area. So we're gonna make a drawer. So we need to do a cutout in this wall so that we can make a drawer space in here. So that's really it. We're gonna get started on figuring out the rail and the drawer and just get started putting this all together. Babe, that looks like it's down to the yucky table. <laughs>
with three eighths inch carriage bolts that we just painted the heads of them black to you know, make it look a little more finished and decorative. So this is all nice and secure. We made our drawer that's going to go in here. This is just sitting in here right now. It's not attached. We still need to secure the sliders. We've got to still put the sliders on here. But we did not record making the drawer because we made it exactly like we made all the drawers in our closet. So we'll go ahead and link probably in a card up here the video where we made all the drawers for our closet. So if you're interested in how we made those, you can watch that. We're gonna use undermount or yeah, undermount slide rails on this, um, just like we did in there. So we still have to attach the other rail on this side, mount the sliders, and then do the slats for the bed. So this is just a piece of scrap wood. This is not obviously one of the actual slats, but um, you can see we're just gonna space them out and they're perfectly flush on top of the rail. They'll be perfectly flush with this bench over here so that the mattress can then come extend all the way over to here. But we're gonna space out our slats um, with two and a half inches between them, which I think is the recommended spacing of bed slats. So that's what we're gonna do. And so once we get the other rail, the slats, the drawer slides, Done. This lower bunk will be done. We're going to make a matching one on the opposing side, on the driver's side for the lower bunk, and then we'll tackle the upper bunks. So we're super excited. The kids were, uh, they really like the way it looks so far, and we're just happy to be getting this room going in more like an actual bedroom. made for the lower bunk bed on the driver's side and it's basically identical to the first one we did with the a couple exceptions one is we're not having a drawer here we are doing an opening but we're just going to do like a, either a flip down drawer fade or you know lid kind of um or i don't know something that pops off but we want it to match just once the drawer face is on over here we want a matching one over here but we don't really have, with the heater, we don't really have the space for a drawer. But we still want access in here. We can still have like a bin of stuff in here. So we're just gonna do it a little differently. We'll either hinge it down or make it pop off or something. But we also have uh, the heater exhaust vent on this side. So um, we made the hole for that. So this is where the heater exhaust is gonna come out. We're actually in this cabinet face that we build over here, we're gonna actually probably make some like slats in there and make that the intake. So we wanted the intake and the exhaust kind of on opposite ends. And so that's why we had to put the exhaust part way over here, if that makes sense. So, but that sort of left us with a little bit of a challenge with the wheel well being right here. So our original thought was that we have enough space between the top of the wheel well and the and the top of the, the wall here to fit our heater hose. However, we didn't we kind of forgot and didn't take into account that the rail was going to be here. So unless we cut into the metal rail, that wasn't going to work. So um, what we ended up doing this is just kind of a funny little thing we did was 
we cut into our wheel well and that allows us because it's really tight between the wheel well and the wall we didn't really have enough space to kind of lower it down gradually it would have like kinked real bad right there if we tried to just shove it down in there and then turn the 90 degrees to get it out of the wall so we just sort of cut into our wheel well a little bit and then that way we can have a gradual slope down into there and we can still uh, we won't have any kinks in the hose uh, we kind of sanded this all down so there's no sharp edges and then that will go right into the back of the um, like vent right there so this is the vent that our heater came with and so that normally is what is um, this normally goes in from the front through and then this sticks on to here we decided not to use the, uh, this front piece because I just knew <laughs> with this being the kids' room and the kids' beds that this would end up getting kicked and um, just because it sticks out away from the bed, I just didn't have a good feeling about that. So what we ended up doing was we made a little modification. We took the, that back piece and we actually sanded off this little lip so that it would lie flat. And then we attach this on to the back instead. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put just a flat cover here um, that will vent it. And actually, I just painted it, it's drying right now. What we actually ended up finding to use there um, was just a, like a shower drain cover. It's just a flat piece of stainless steel that has holes in it because it's a drain cover and we painted it black to match our hardware and we're just going to attach that then here to the outside of this so that is our plan so we need to go ahead and run our heater uh, vent hoses in here before we attach our rail so that's what we're going to do next finish the heater hose attach the rail and then attach the rail on the other side and then this lower bunk will be done <music>